And we set the tone from the first play to the last play. Let's go. We do that. We dominate. We win this game. Let's go. Big dogs on three. One, two, three. The LA Rams are at home this week after a desperately needed week off, gearing up for the second half of the year, gearing up for round two with the Seattle Seahawks, who got back in the win column last week thanks to their kicker being pretty clutch. Good snap. Good hold. Good kick. Seattle wins it. 29-26, the final. Geno Smith comes in feeling like Seattle Geno again, too. Snapped a two-game funk by hitting Washington with 369 yards, two TDs, no picks, a rating over 100. Smith on the roll, throws for the goal line. It is caught for the touchdown. Passing attack last week looked exactly how the 12s envisioned it looking this season, and hopefully this week. DK Metcalf, 98 yards. Quick dart, Metcalf with a catch, and Metcalf down at the 49-yard line. Tyler Lock. 92 yards in a score. Geno Smith looking for Lockett on the sideline. He makes the catch and hops out of bounds. Jackson Smith and Jigba, 53 yards. Smith throws on the cross. It's Smith and Jigba. There's a first down. Banged out of bounds. Look at the confidence in the young guy. And running back Kenneth Walker took a pass, 64 yards for a TD. But it's that wide receiver trio that's supposed to drive their aerial bus. The trick to making it all work, keeping the heat out of Geno's kitchen. Nothing but sandwiches and salads allowed. He only took one sack last week, only faced pressure 26.5% of the time. That's a nice low figure any QB would welcome. Smith to the sideline, coming back to get it is DK Metcalf, and that'll be a Seattle first down. Previous two weeks where Geno the Jet crept back in, he faced crazy high pressure. So LA, what do you got? Rams pass rush has Byron Young with five sacks. Aaron Donald, five and a half. Love trying to take off, got tripped up. Aaron Donald with his big play ability. But the Rams have a low pressure rate, a low sack rate as well. Bugging the QB hasn't been a thing for them. LA's ability to stop Seattle's passing attack is heavily cornerback dependent. They have to play those wide receivers well and they have struggled big time with that over their last four games. They've given up a rating of 109.5 to the position in that window. Can they finally get something downfield? Romeo Dobbs held on for the catch. So they hope the break allowed for some hurt guys to heal and a reset. Hawks will test LA along the ground as well. Walker last week, 19 tries, just 3.3 yards per carry. But look out for rookie Zach Charbonnet, 7.3 a run on his six chances. Long was only 12 too, so it wasn't just one big run. Charbonnet into the secondary with a first down and more. He's averaging 5.6 a carry for 2023. LA's defense very prone to giving up big yards along the ground to running backs this season, allowing 4.3 a carry to the position. Warren. Looking for an alley! He's got the end zone! LA's defensive play is part of why they were on a three-game losing streak before they hit their week of rest. Offense, though, hasn't been much better. Couldn't scratch out 21 points in any of those three losses. Through the hands of Puka Nakua, who's been one of the best pass catchers. Matthew Stafford didn't play in their most recent loss. He should be back for this one, but he hasn't looked good in 2023. Eight touchdowns, seven picks, a rating of 82. He's not under pressure. He throws that ball about five yards inside of Cooper Cup, and that's about as easy a pick six as you're going to get. Here's the thing. He deals with a lot of pressure. Few quarterbacks have faced more than he has. Four-man rush. Stafford still in trouble. Pressure. Drop. Ball is out. Stafford has taken a sack in every game he's played save one. The first game of the year, a win over Seattle. Stafford over the middle. Oh. Atwell open again and has the first down. That was when the world first asked, Puka Naku, new, who is that? Puka Nakua went for 10 catches, 119 yards. Into traffic and Nakua wow. with the catch and the toe tap. Are you kidding me, Rook? Nakua went on a rookie record breaking tear. Then Cooper came back and Cup blew up for a couple games. Going deep. He's got Cup open. He's got it. Cooper Cup gets open deep. And then things got awkward and Stafford got hurt. With the extra time off, maybe Sean McVay comes up with a crazy way to utilize Cooper Nakua, the ultimate wide receiver slot duo. Stafford going deep, looking for Cup. He's got it! Stafford over the middle. Here comes Puka Nakua with a first down and a burst out to midfield. Seattle secondary is miles better than they were that first encounter. You may look at their stat line this week and think they got lit by Sam Howell. Over 300 yards, three touchdowns, no picks, a rating near 110. 
And all that's true. Howell with Mafe in his face, floats it to the sideline. Gibson with a Washington touchdown! Seattle's cornerbacks, though, avoided by Mr. Howell for the most part. His top two receivers in that game, 119 yards to running back Brian Robinson, 42 to running back Antonio Gibson. From weeks 3 to 10, Seattle has held wide receivers to a sub-80 rate, but to running backs have allowed a 110.4 rate after week 10's showing. Fake it to Strong, screen it to Strong, and Strong breaks free! It's not that Stafford can't dump to backs, it's just that's not usually what he does. Seattle's pass rush has come a long way since week one as well. They have Leonard Williams now. He had one of Seattle's three sacks last week. Oye Mafe had one too. He leads the team with seven. Pocket collapsing and Howell's going to go down. It's the seventh straight game with a sack for Boye Mafe, and that's a Seattle record. Who takes the second leg of the West Coast rivalry? Feels like this is now or never for the Rams. Hawks in a battle with San Francisco for the division, so they can't let up. Take to the comments. I'll shut up now.